here are the most interesting deaths I've covered so far. Trigger warning. I'm glad I'm not the only person to ever wonder what would happen if a human were microwaved. For those of you who also suffer from dark curiosities, I'm here to tell you what it would be like. In the 60s and 70s, microwaves were basically death traps. There are many stories of people who obtained gnarly radiation burns to their hands, some who lost their fingers, and that was just after seconds of exposure. Your skin and retinas will be the first thing to scorch. It will be a bizarre kind of agony. Your eyes will feel like they're bulging out of their sockets and about to explode. And they probably will, but first you'll lose your vision. Every inch of your skin will be smoldering. It will shrivel up as moisture is drawn out and then split down to your soft tissue. Surprisingly, your internal organs will be spared, but your blood will not. It will curdle as it is cooked, like a bad can of Campbell's tomato soup. This will singe your vessels, which will hurt like a son of a bitch. You aren't going to like this, but it can take up to 30 minutes to cause death in an average weighted adult. You will not explode, but like I said, your eyeballs will. Hyperthermia will likely be your cause of death after enduring radiation hell. Mine can sure run away with itself. Have you ever had the thought, what would it feel like to be deep fried? Well, I'm here to explain. This one is a little tricky. The size of the person and how much fat they have on their body is a huge factor. The more fat, the better. The fat would protect your internal organs for a longer period of time. However, it can catch fire. Your main arteries, like the carotid, would still cook at the same rate. Upon entering the hot crackling oil, you would acquire third-degree burns in a matter of seconds and near fourth within 10. This may actually cause worse scalding pain than burning alive. Sure, frying oil isn't nearly as hot as fire, but oil holds in heat. Plus, it clings to your silhouette tightly. By the minute mark, your carotid will be cooked, causing a major blockage, preventing blood and oxygen from reaching the brain. Furthermore, you might just burst into flames, adding severe insult to injury. I'm thinking it will feel like napalm all over your body, seeping deep into every layer of flesh. Inescapable misery. You will be unconscious due to shock after maybe a minute and dead within two due to thermal decomposition of your tissue. You've all suffered from insomnia at one point or another, but did you know you can die from it? I'm going to tell you what it would be like. Fatal familial insomnia is a degenerative disease that honestly sounds miserable. It's said to be rare, however, due to the condition of the ill at the end stage, cases likely fall through the cracks. It begins as just textbook insomnia. Additionally, you may experience lucid dreams and muscle jerks. Over the course of months or at times years, you reach a point where you'll be physically unable to sleep at all. You won't be able to tell someone or ask for help. You'll be in a constant hallucination and 100% unable to differentiate between what's real and what isn't. You'll have auditory and visual hallucinations. You'll be in a perpetual sleep deprivation psychosis, which may be perceived as severe schizophrenia. Sadly, even strong sedatives will not Work, there is no cure. Within weeks of the end stage, you will slip into a coma. It will likely be the first peace you would have in a long while. In this case, the death is more forgiving than the disease. Time to dive into what it would feel like to die in a pool of liquid nitrogen. It actually can't be a pool because it would just turn to steam, so let's use our imaginations. You could dip a small area of skin into the substance and remain unharmed. Due to the light and frost effect, no time to explain, but your heat would create a temporary barrier. I repeat, temporary. Do not attempt. If you become fully submerged, well, you're not coming out alive. Within moments, the nitrogen will draw out and freeze any moisture in your tissue. Because we're over half water, the liquid molecules will combine, expand, and freeze. You'll obtain the worst frostbite immediately but your nerves will become severely damaged so pain would be momentary you'll suffer a great deal but for a short time if you swallow some on the way in it will blow holes in your stomach your body's temp is above its boiling point causing it to turn to gas you'll swell like a balloon and pop meanwhile the forming ice in your body will draw out all moisture in your cells and cause them to shrivel there's no functioning like that it's not compatible with life so in short you'll freeze externally explode internally and then freeze the whole way through isn't science fun let me tell you how it would feel to die in a dryer. If you're on air fluff, it might be slightly less painful, but just as deadly. If you're on high heat, you're in for a world of hurt. Have you ever put on a pair of jeans fresh out of the dryer only to burn your skin on the middle button? Well, dryers reach temperatures of up to 140 degrees. In the first minute, complete panic will be your biggest worry. It will overshadow the fact that you are smacking hard every couple of seconds. As the heat intensifies, your skin's epidermis will begin to burn. It will be a bizarre sensation, like you're slowly being seared by an external heat source. Every time you hit hard, an intensified jolt of burning pain will ring through your nerves. Within 10 minutes, your head will feel hazy due to lack of oxygen. You'll grow nauseous and possibly begin to vomit after 15 due to heat exhaustion. Near 20, the burning will penetrate deep to your lower layers of skin. Your flesh will begin to split open. You may have shattered bones. You'll be in a dizzying, spinning hell. Your eardrums will feel like they're about to explode, and they might. It may take up to an hour to finally die due to asphyxiation. Your autopsy is going to take a long time due to the burns and massive trauma. Let's discuss what it would be like to die in outer space. 
I'm not sure if you caught my videos on Mount Everest, but to me, that place is proof that hell is actually freezing cold. Well, space is even more freezing. Its average temperature is negative 455 degrees. And what's shocking is that isn't even what's going to kill you. There is no protection from the sun, so despite the fact that you will feel a deep searing pain all over your body as accelerated frostbite takes hold, you'll actually obtain such a severe sunburn that you will develop skin cancer in seconds. If you so much as glance at the sun, you'll instantly go blind. A a process called ebolism will set in. Basically, the space vacuum will cause the nitrogen in your blood to dissolve, creating a lot of bubbles in your veins, which in turn will make you inflate like a human-shaped balloon, starting with your extremities. All remaining oxygen inside of your brain and lungs will also be sucked out by the vacuum, causing hypoxia. Your lungs will rupture, and you'll be out cold in 15 seconds or less. Your blood will begin to boil due to lack of oxygen, but luckily, you will already be a goner. Welcome to another segment of my movie death scene series where I tell you exactly what death scenes from movies would feel like. Trigger warning. Today we're diving into Final Destination 4 with the ever grotesque pool drain scene. You might not want to hear this, but this actually can happen. In fact, there used to be tags warning of disembowelment on pool drains. I'll say it again. Trigger warning. You'll feel a force unlike anything you've ever experienced. The drain cover needs to be removed first. The force is that of a vacuum that can basically suck 300 pounds per square inch. You don't stand a chance against it. The good news is, is that the scarce survivors have often said that they do not remember the pain, but if you do, it will feel like a giant zipper of fire beginning from your lower chest all the way down. Over and over, the burning zipper will rip and shred open inside of you. Also, you'll feel like you're gargling and swallowing lava, though that will likely be overshadowed by the latter. You'll be actively drowning all while this is happening. Passive blood loss will greatly weaken your fight. Your bubbles will be almost entirely sucked out of you. You'll lose consciousness within two minutes with death following just minutes behind that. This one makes the hair on my neck stick straight up. I'm going to explain what you'd experience if you died from eating glass or razors. Trick or warning? Well, we know that this obviously wouldn't end well. Bigger shards are far more likely to cause catastrophic consequence. Our mouths are filled with protection. It takes a lot to cause serious injury, but if you're forced to chew and swallow, shards would no doubt pierce and get stuck in your gums. The worst part would be the nauseating, rusty metallic taste. As you swallow, it will cause a trail of destruction beginning with your esophagus. Tiny razor blades would be worse. You'd have to swallow them whole, and that would cause long gashes that would bleed excessively. As for the pain, well, your throat will roar with an angry fire. Additionally, you'll be doubled over with a rotten gut ache. Chances are your stomach will perforate. The bloating pain will travel like spider webs to your sides, back and up into your chest. You'll know that you're dying. If you manage to cause minimal bloodshed, you will die a long, agonizing death days later from peritonitis caused sepsis. Peritonitis is an infection of the lining in your gut. Your organs will fail. You'll experience widespread misery as well as an array of nasty sensations. Allow me to take you on a journey into what it would be like to die stuck in a cave. Trick or warning. You're exploring a newly mapped cave. You find a tunnel that you swear you recognize from the map, so you proceed. It's a very tight squeeze. You're on your belly trying to maneuver your body through, but this was expected. What you didn't expect was the right tunnel was farther down, and this one's shrinking. You start to wonder if you screwed up. You try to shimmy backwards, but you won't budge. In fact, the force has only lodged you farther in. You're on a downward incline. You yell out for help, but as you exhale, you feel your ribs lock onto the hard rock surrounding you. Panic floods out your better judgment. You begin to shallow hyperventilate which makes your rib bones throb all of your saliva is pooling near your mouth and your tongue feels engorged you have no concept of time it's already felt like days you cannot draw in a clarifying breath you can feel your neck and face swell a labored wheeze has developed deep in your chest i can't die this way you whisper vivid hallucinations run wild you dip out to a place where you're free from that rock only to return to that agonizing blanketing darkness every inch of you is screaming in sharp pain has it been hours days weeks you finally find solace when you fade away